Hey, uh, hi there, everybody. This is Phil Simborg with the Back in the Learning Center. And uh, as you see in the picture on the right, that's my good buddy, John O'Hagan, who's also a teacher, a uh, certified teacher with the Back in the Learning Center, one of the first ones when we started the organization some 10 years ago or so. And he's also one of the top players in the world, consistently ranking amongst the very, very best. Uh, and uh, nice to have you here, John. Yeah, nice to be here. So uh, what happened is every now and then uh, in our shoe ad, I have a shoe ad online with a bunch of friends, and we don't play for too much money. But we, we have full consulting mainly so that we can argue, and we have uh, lots of arguments and bets. And the five positions I'm going to show John today he's never seen before, and I'm going to test him because it's fun to test him to see what he would do. Uh, there are four plays and one cube decision. And I also want a good explanation from John as to why the right play is right. And that's why John is here, because he's a, he's a master at ex understanding and explaining the plays. So I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> <laughs> you are clearly a master. You've proven that. Uh, now, if you're both, I want you to take the quiz along with us, the people who are watching this. And if you need more time after I show the position, I'm not going to take a lot of time. We're going to move on as soon as John feels he's comfortable with the answer. But if you need more time, you can just pause the video and see how you do. Every one of these positions is one that very good players in my shoe at missed or we argued about or bet on or had a problem with. So I think you'll find them challenging and interesting, and hopefully we'll learn something from John as we go. Uh, so let's get started. Here's the first position. These are all money games. And the pip count is shown on the right side. Uh, white has a 4-1 to play. The cube is in the center. It's for money. And you can see that white is winning, is losing the race by 15 pips. So if you are white, you can see there's a bunch of options here. And you can see why we had arguments. But I'm going to be quiet now and let John figure out what he would do. And, and you figure out what you would do. Okay. This is a good one. Um, that means you're not sure, huh? <laughs> not at all. No. Good. Good. See. And I don't feel so bad about I don't feel so bad about screwing it up myself. Okay. You can make the nine. You can make the anchor. If you make the anchor, you can either play the four, or seven to three hitting, or ten to six. So those are the three plays. So. Let's see, if it was DMP, which it isn't, but if it was DMP, what would I do? Pretty DMP sure means double them. match point, which is a score uh, situation where gammons don't matter. And what John is pointing out is that, is that a lot of times you, you want to look at a play and see, if you didn't care about gammons, what would you do? So that's what DMP means. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I think the DMP play is to make the nine point. Um, and it certainly not anchoring up though is could be a problem because you might well get blitzed and then black can escape by rolling a one then later a six from your five point prime um but this is a money game cube in the middle so there's no gammons yet yeah i think i'd make the dmp play make the nine point okay by the way uh, John also referred to an interesting rule that virtually all money games use. You cannot win a gammon until the cube has been turned. It's the Jacoby rule, and we certainly do apply that. So he's keeping that in mind in this play. All right, so John, congratulations. You came up with one of the better plays, but you certainly didn't get the right one. Uh, yours was the third best play, and you made this horrible play that I made of making a nine point. Uh, okay. But the right play is to hit. So can you... Now that you see the right play, can you tell us why you were wrong? Okay, so, um, well, it certainly gets gammon a lot less since you make the anchor. Um, and you are um, an underdog to be hit back. So red hits back with any 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, or 4, 6. Um, and uh, let's see, if Black, uh, he's got a couple, of course, if he, he might not come in at all, you know, one in nine chance, and then plus uh, two six and one six are not good entering numbers. So um, 
I guess the combination of, uh, you know, fewer gamma losses. I can't quite read the uh, winning chance numbers. They look pretty close, though. Uh, the winning chances, the winning, you know, you are absolutely right. If you make the nine point, you're, it's the highest winning chance of 45.4. And yeah. the hitting play is only 44.8. But they're really close. Yeah. The, ga the gammons really aren't that big a difference either. The gammon, the gammon losses by making the anchor are actually uh, more. Uh, no, no. You actually get ga No? No, you, you're... Uh, if you make the uh, correct play, you lose a net of about 4% gammons. If you make the 9 point, you lose, what is it, you win, can't quite read it, the print's kind of small here. Uh, you lose 24.9 gammons, and you lose, or you win, I think, 11. So you lose That's right. 13. Okay. I see, yeah. So, so in terms of net gammons, it's worse. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about something else here. There are the the play that you made uh, making the nine point. You're playing obviously what's called a priming game. You're trying to build uh, points in a row and trying to win this game by priming. And Extreme right. Gammon is telling us no. This is a game where you need to play a hitting game. And there is a general rule of thumb that you prime a pair and you hit a single checker. Because uh, what probably is wrong with your play, John? My guess is that he does end up escaping too much, even though you made the fire yeah. prime. He's got he's got enough yeah. time to attack you and hold you up on the other side and eventually get out. And yeah. if he had less time, maybe your play is right. And yeah. if you were already anchored, maybe your play is right. So Yeah, now that um, I uh, think about it, and I see XG's answer, it <laughs> makes perfect sense. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I was wrong. Well, I'm so thrilled uh, that uh, the best player, one of the better players in the world, made the same mistake I made. And if this yeah. doesn't illustrate one thing, it illustrates uh, how, how even the best players make mistakes. By the way, I'm taking this at a time where we're having that great match going on between Mochi and, and Udaya, uh, the yeah. core championship there online. And if you watch that, you'll see that uh, uh, Mochi actually made a point four error, which is unheard of. And people were shocked. How could a good player make a point? It happens. It happens. Oh, right. It happens. This game is not that easy a game. All right, let's go to number two. Let's go to number okay. two. Uh, uh, this is another 4-1. I'm being redundant again. White to play 4-1. Okay. The cube has been turned, though. The cube has been turned, and now you're up in the race. So how would you play a 4-1 here? Okay. All right. So you can hit a couple of ways or not hit. And let's see, you are ahead 21 in the race. Okay. Cube has been turned. And you... See, so you would like to get a gammon, if possible. Being hit would uh, not be pleasant, though. Um, play wins. These are tough problems, I tell you. I'm so glad. I'm glad to hear it. Boy, this is 
playing against one man back, I still don't think you want to hit here. So I would play 13-9. And with the one, I think I'd come up in the back, 24-23. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're two for two. Uh, hitting yes. is very, very right. Yeah. Uh, it's hitting again. And uh, I'll add a little bit to this because I've had the advantage over you of studying these for a little bit because I made the same mistakes. Not exactly the same mistake you made this time. I actually made the second best play. I hit and played 7-3 uh, uh, and because uh, I was a little afraid of the double, double hit. But the reason I hit was we have him outboarded by a lot. You have four inner board points to two. He has the one checker back, and that tells me it's time to go for a hitting game. And I also thought I could win a lot more gammons by hitting. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, it turns out it is true. You win about 9% more gammons by hitting. So sure. to me, I, I wasn't sure which way to hit. And I, I'm not right. upset about making a 3% error hitting the wrong way. Uh, right. But it's still it's still loose cries for hitting. Um, and yeah. you're right, if you yeah. get hit back, you're not happy. But... But, right. you know, you, you only get hit back, uh, how many, 13 rolls. And right. uh, it doesn't hit you back. It's a hell of a game. Back, well, double one will hit you know. on the midpoint, too. So ah, you're right. You're right. But double no. one hits back. Yeah. yeah. And also, you, you've uh, you've turned the cube. So you need to actually win the game. You can't just get to a good position and then double them out because the opponent already owns the cube. So, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And the obvious the obvious fault with making the anchor is, of course, if he rolls a five. You know, he's got 11 right. rolls immediately that uh, that are going to hurt you really, really bad. Okay, let's go to the next one. Right. Okay. White to play 5-3. Okay, you own the cube, money game. Okay. Certainly hitting eight to five. Question uh, with the three, and then with the five, you come out off the anchor, or do you play uh, fourteen to nine? You don't play eight to three. So uh, yeah, I, I think I'd hang on to the anchor. So uh, eight to five and fourteen to nine. Okay, eight to five and fourteen to nine for the board builders. And uh, you were right here that it, you must hit, uh, but eight to three becomes the right play. And I, I suspect it's because you're holding the cube. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but if the cube were on the other side, would, I, I would think it would be closer. But it's about you having having some efficient cube. I, it may be, or maybe it's yeah, about that's losing yeah, And also, it's less of a disaster if you get hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the hitting play was clearly right here, so you got you got that part right. Okay, got that part so you, right. You got over your shyness of hitting. I mean, that, I, I'm kidding <laughs> about that. I know you. I know you have no shyness of hitting. I've taken many lessons from you and gone over many positions with you where you told me that you you, know, you have to take chances in this game. That they have to be and hitting is often right, and people are afraid to take chances. But there's really no safe play here. That's that's besides hitting anyway. So the hit is pretty much uh, obvious. Okay, number four. This is a cube action problem. White is on roll. White is holding the cube. Uh, look, this looks like a continuation. Yeah, this is a continuation of the same game. Continuation. And now so they, they yeah. made my play, and then it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, using the Wolsey rule, am I sure that red has a take? No, not at all. Am I too good? No. So uh, I redouble, and should red take or pass? Uh, not that many gammons lost, and there's a chance you might not cover. Not likely, but could happen. So I'll say redouble or take. Okay. Bingo. Big, big right. lead double and, a, and an even bigger take, and this is what shocked me. I wasn't sure at all about the take. In fact, I think I dropped this cube. I figure he's almost always going to cover. He's got 27 rolls plus some combinations 
so he's going to cover, you know, maybe 80% of the time. Even if he doesn't cover, I feel like I need a four. So why am I so wrong? What makes this a take? Well, um, first of all, uh, the net gamuts are not that large. It's only about uh, 12%, right? Uh -huh. So, um, therefore, you know, you don't have to adjust your take point up that much higher over over and above what it would be in a straight race. Um, and even if white does cover, you've got a couple chances at rolling, you know, 6-6, six, six, for example. Or if white covers, he might well leave a fly shot or two in the outfield with the other half of the number. So if you hit one of those, he'll be in great shape. Um, and when the roof caves in and you just end up with a crashed ace point game, you know, it's, it's horrible, but, you know, you can still win a small percent of those games. Mm -hmm. And let's see, are there any, let's see, how many numbers actually don't cover? Um, six, five, six, seven, numbers don't cover so almost so you're right uh, you know about 80 percent of the numbers do cover and by the way if you roll a six two or five two wouldn't you lift <coughs> or, or am I wrong oh, I, would, I think I would lift so even if they don't cover you probably, probably don't yeah. get a shot yeah. So, yeah. so even if yeah. they don't cover you don't get a shot I want to talk about one other thing you mentioned you said you don't have to adjust that much from your normal take point in a racing game for the uh, uh, for the, um, uh, the gamut. gamuts, so uh, I learned this from you that your normal take point is twenty five percent, but because of too big, you can take it around twenty one and a half or twenty two. Is that still correct in your mind? Is that still what you're using? That's correct in a straight race, yeah. but in uh -huh. a, uh, uh, the way I do it uh, is you start with twenty five plus half of the net gamuts. So half of 12 is 6, so that makes it 31% less cubic, and uh, usually about one-seventh of, uh, of, of that figure is what you can deduct for cubic. So one-seventh of 31 is about 4.5, so you can take with about 26.5%, and you're at 31.4, it says. I, I got you. And you actually do that math over the board. You actually do well, those it's calculations. Easy. It's just... 25 plus half of the net gamuts, that's easy to do. Well, if, you know, if you can, if your estimates of the gamuts are in the ballpark. So that's just... That's just the point. That's adding. the point I'm asking about over the board. You actually estimate gamuts both ways over the board. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, now, 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 we know, now we know one reason why John is one of the best players in the world. I guarantee you, if you did a poll of all the open players who looked at this position, I, get, I guarantee you less than 10% of the open players would sit here and actually estimate the wins, gammon wins and losses for both sides and come up with a gammon adjusted take point. I, I, well, I, I know this for a fact because I teach and work with open players all the time. So this is I, one of yeah. the reasons you have the edge and probably one of the reasons you got this right and I did. And the other thing I loved is you did what you taught me and what you, we teach at the Back Gamma Learning Center. You never ever give the cube until you first ask yourself, use Woolsey's Law, ask yourself what you think the other player should do. Whether he should take the pass. And as John said, he wasn't that sure it was a take, so it has to be a double. He didn't have to do any do very much work to double. He didn't have to help market losers and he didn't have to get into anything yeah. other than the fact that he, that he thinks the take is, is, is iffy. Turns out the yeah. take is not so iffy. And by the way, when you, when you ask yourself if, if it might be a pass, or am I too good, that's something else that players miss all the time. It wouldn't take a lot to turn this into a too good position. For example, if you took Red's checker that's on the, uh, over here on, on his uh, nine point, and you put it on the bar, you're probably too good. You probably have so many games. Yeah. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't take much to change that. So you have to think about these things too. Very instructive, thank you. Okay, last one. Right. White play 2-2. Two, two. We all know how that 2-2 two, two is the toughest roll in backgammon. There's so many ways to play it. So this one has a lot of ways to play it. Let's see what you would do. Okay, double twos. Cube in the middle. Prime versus prime. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you make the 22 and then 13, 9, 13, 11. Okay, so you've ruled out making a six prime, which is very, very yeah. exciting thing for most of us to do. And you're 100% right. You also ruled out hitting. Uh, and you, what you, so your, your goal is exactly right. You came up with the best play. Uh, why is, you know, it's so tempting. People yell, oh, wait a minute, a six prime is worth gold. In this case, it would be a 22%, 22 blunder, 0.22 blunder. So yeah. uh, I think the, the answer is obvious. You're not likely to hold it because if you don't roll a six immediately, you're going to start running into crashing your six prime. And he can also well, start attacking that, you and make a better prime. Hmm? Well, not, not only that, but uh, red is going to hit you loose on his three-point with any three or four and some fives, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you then either don't enter or enter without hitting, uh, you're soon you know, probably going to have to give up your six prime, like you said. Uh -huh. So it'll be a prime versus prime game, and you really don't have much of an edge in this game. Yeah. Looks like you, you gain a pretty big edge. Uh, you're you're a sixty five percent favorite to win, and uh, yeah. there's not there's, he's probably now you really there's not much he can do to hurt you unless he rolls a one six or a two six. Other than that, one, you're six, not going to get hurt very much. Yeah, uh, two one and one one are good shots, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Well, I did get this one right over the board, and I actually won a bet on it because somebody bet me. That uh, you know, six prime is a six prime. Just do it and see what happens. And uh, I, I was yeah. happy, uh, happy to get it right and rolled it out. John, uh, you uh, you started out poor and then you got hot. And uh, I will send you I will send you these positions so you can learn from the, your mistakes. But uh, I will one, try you, to learn from this. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're one of the people that taught me to put in variations in this study. Don't just look at a mistake and say, oh so bad and it's messed up. The way you learn is by doing little variations and seeing what makes the play right and what would make the play wrong. And uh, that's one of the reasons that you're such a great teacher and a great player. Thanks for your time. Yeah, I am going to post this. Okay. I'm going to post those, this because those, you said uh, we would. Yeah, okay. No problem. Those first couple, uh, you know, as you said, uh, generally, when you're playing against one checker back, you do attack. And I just got conned in by the position and thought that these were exceptions, but they're quite often they're not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Well, All right. Very you've, good. Restored, you've restored my faith in something that I always say. This is just not that easy a game. And people oh, wow. who complain, but I love it when people they complain that this is such a hard game. I said, look, if you want an easy game, go play tic-tac-toe. But it's no fun. Yeah. The fact that it's, it's the hardness of this game and it, that it makes it challenging and fun. That's why we play it, because it's exciting. And even the best players in the world have far from mastered this game. Thanks, Absolutely. John. I'll talk to you okay, soon. Okay, and uh, watch, watch, watch YouTube, and we'll have this posted. Bye-bye.